Not long ago, I made a video about motorizing and automating sliding windows using a linear actuator. But a lot of us have windows that open with a crank, and we can't be leaving out our cranky windows. So here's my DIY motorized automated crank window opener. Cranking windows like this come in all shapes and sizes, but the one thing they all have in common is a mechanism like this. There's a shaft with a gear that you spin with a crank, and that's how they open. Now, cavemen used to open these windows with the crank like you see here, but we are not cavemen. We are smart homers. So we're going to use a motor connected to this little shaft to open and close our window from the comfort of our laundry room hammock. I've had a lot of success lately with these geared DC motors combined with this H-Bridge motor controller. So why reinvent the wheel? Turning that little crank does require quite a bit of torque. The motor I'm using provides about seven kilograms centimeters of torque. If your window is a little hard to open or bigger or heavier than mine, or if you just want yours to open and close faster, then you may want a little bit bigger motor like this one here. It costs a bit more, but this one provides twice as much torque, and you can use it with the same motor controller. This is the window that I've chosen to use for this project. This is in our toy room slash laundry room, which is above the garage. That means it's the least insulated room in the house. It's freezing in the winter and it's blazing hot in the summer. So I want this window to open when I turn on my not so quiet cool fan. Now both sides of this window open and the motor controller can control two motors. So why not motorize both sides? Well, as some of you have pointed out in my previous window opening video, once you motorize a window like this, if the power goes out, or if for some other reason you can't control the window, it's essentially locked. So if there were a fire or a zombie attack, or some other reason why you would need to escape through that window, you may be in trouble. So in every situation where I'm motorizing a window, it's not the only window in the room. If you do decide to motorize a window when it's the only way out of the room, then make sure you build in some sort of quick release mechanism so you can disable the motor and get out the window or just hang a hammer nearby. That'll work. The shaft on this motor is round but flat on one side and the shaft where the window crank goes has teeth. So to connect the two, what I did was design and 3D print a coupling that would fit the motor on one side and the shaft for the window on the other side. I printed this at a PLA. The first one I printed worked pretty good for a while, but eventually it stripped out. I just 3D printed another one and it's been working fine for the last couple of weeks. But if you're going to 3D print one like this, just keep in mind that stripping the plastic is a definite point of potential failure. If you want a stronger more secure connection between your motor and the shaft on the window, then using a coupling like this that's metal and can be tightened is probably the way to go. These are used a lot in 3D printers. If you're going to do this, make sure that the one you buy is going to fit the two shafts. For me, this one should work. The motor shaft is about six millimeters and the shaft on the window crank is about eight millimeters. If I keep stripping out PLA couplings, you can bet I'll be buying some of these. If you haven't guessed already, for Wi-Fi control, I'm going to use a D1 Mini. It's going to run a sketch I'll make with ESP Home, and I'm going to control the whole thing with Home Assistant. If you don't know what Home Assistant is, there's a video. I wish the D1 Mini had more ground pins. If I ever opt for a Node MCU instead of a D1 Mini, having extra ground pins is going to be one of the big reasons why. To make sure that the motor stops cranking when the window is closed, I'm going to include a reed switch. Once the magnet gets close to the sensor, the motor's going to shut down. You're also going to need a 12 volt power supply. I find myself using a lot of these, so I've been buying them in packs of five, and this is the best price that I can find anywhere. To secure the motor to the windowsill, I designed and 3D printed this cute little wedgie. The motor sits up here, all the electronics go in here, there's a hole for a button over here, and it screws to the windowsill here. And there's a lid to cap the open end. Your window crank and your windowsill are probably gonna be different than mine, 
but of course I'll make this available to you if you want to copy it. If you don't have a 3D printer, you could probably build something similar to this with 2x4s or other blocks of wood. Just make sure that the motor can't spin. It's going to have to be fixed in place or there's no point in doing any of this. I included this button here so that we have local control. That is, if you're sitting next to the window and you're from the Paleolithic era, you could push that button to open and close the window. The wiring for this whole thing looks like this. All the grounds have to connect, including one leg of the button and the reed switch. The other leg of the reed switch goes to D4, and the other leg of the button goes to D3. D1 and D2 go to IN3 and IN4 on the motor controller. That's because in this case, I'm using the motor B connections, which are on the right hand side of the motor controller. On this motor controller, pin N1 and N2 control motor A, which is on the left hand side, and pin 3 and 4 go to motor B, which is on the right hand side of the board. There's a 5 volt output connector on the motor controller that you can use to go to the 5 volt pin on the D1 Mini for power. And that's about it for connections. Now let's take a look at the ESP Home YAML file. If you don't know what ESP Home is, there's a great video on how to get started. All this stuff here at the top is what gets populated when you run through the new device wizard. Next, we need to define two pins as outputs. In this case, I'm going to use D1 and D2. Following that, we need to make two switches out of those two pins. This cover section is what will give us the arrows for up and down to open and close the window. The platform is template. I'm using optimistic true, which means whenever you tell it to open, it will assume that the window opened. And it will then only give you the option to close the window. For the open action, we're going to turn on pin 1 and turn off pin 2. I timed it, and after about 40 seconds, the window was far enough open for me. So I'm putting a delay here for 40 seconds followed by a command to turn off pin 1, which will stop the window from moving. For the close action, I need to switch those pins. So pin 2 will be on and pin 1 will be off. That'll spin the motor in the other direction and close the window. I'm not using a delay here to turn it off because I'm going to use the read switch to turn it off. And anytime I hit the stop button, I want both pins to go to off. That's it for the cover. Now we have two binary sensors. The first one is the read switch. It's connected to pin D4. This part here is how I tell the motor to stop turning when the read switch goes to on. By using pin D4, you also get an LED to light up on the D1 Mini when the window is all the way closed. That's nice. The other binary sensor is the push button, and it works the same way as the button that I've used in the blinds and the curtains and the other motorized window control. If the window is moving, it will stop. If you press it again, it will move in whichever direction it wasn't previously heading. So if it was opening, it will start to close. And if it was closing, it will start to open. It actually works really well. It's a great way to be able to control something like this with just one local button. If you press it and it does the wrong thing, just press it again until it does the thing you want. Perfect. So that's it for the YAML in ESP Home. Save it. Then validate it then compile it and when it's done compiling download the binary once you've downloaded the binary connect your d1 mini to your computer using the usb connector find your esp home sketch right there connect to the com port that is connected to your d1 mini and then hit flash when it's done go to the integrations page and up here at the top you'll have some new devices that will say esp home something something and give you the option to configure. Just click through all those and do what it tells you to do. And then those will all become part of Home Assistant. Once those are all in Home Assistant, now we can do something useful with the user interface. Fortunately for me, I've got an air conditioning page, which manages all the stuff that has to do with keeping me nice and comfy. This is where I have the controls for my noisy cool fan. So it's convenient to put the controls for this window with the controls for the fan since I want the window to open when the fan's on. The card for this is pretty basic. It's just an entity card with a list of all my entities. If you wanted to see what the raw YAML looks like, that's it. 
Can't be much easier than that. Now that all the software is set up, we can do the final assembly by stuffing everything in the wedgie. It fits in there pretty tight, so you gotta do it in the right order. The motor bolts on top, the button goes in first, then the D1 Mini with the USB port facing away from the window. Then you can put the motor controller in. The wires that go in from the power supply, the wires that go out to the motor, and the wires that go to the reed switch can squeeze through the hole in the cap. And then you can put the cap over the open side of the wedgie. And then you can put some screws through the tabs to secure it to the windowsill. The reed switch comes with double-sided tape for easy mounting. I want the window to stop moving as soon as the reed switch is activated. This is a nice sensitive reed switch, so it actually activates when the magnet is a few centimeters away from the sensor. So to compensate for that, I actually had to place the magnet and the sensor a little farther apart than you normally would, so that by the time they make contact with each other, the window is mostly closed. And yes, I said mostly closed. If you look at it, my window doesn't close 100% of the way. It's probably about 98% closed. That's mostly because the motor I'm using isn't quite strong enough to crank it that last little bit. And if I do try to crank it all the way shut, it'll strip the coupling. Don't ask me how I know. Maybe if you're using that bigger, stronger motor and the metal coupling, you can crank yours 100% of the way closed. But for me, for now, 98% is good enough. All right, it's demo time. Well, that's it. Motorized and automated control for your cranky windows. I've got one more window opening mechanism I want to make a video about. I'm going to use some 3D printer parts on a sliding window to open it up all the way. If you like this video and you want to see more, I've got a bunch. And I'm making new ones as often as I can. In addition to videos like this, I do live streams at least once a week on Sunday and sometimes during the week whenever I can squeeze it in. If you want to chat with me or with others who also enjoy these kinds of projects, check us out on Facebook and Discord. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time, adios.